Hello everyone. In this map skills video, we're going to be looking at how we measure height and gradient on ordnance survey maps. First, let us get started with the key terms. Now, there are a few key terms you need to know about. Height and altitude. Both of these terms are normally used interchangeably and they mean the same thing. They mean the height of an object or a point in relation to its sea level. So the height of a mountain, for example. Relief, on the other hand, is sometimes used incorrectly. This normally refers to the change in elevation, so how it compares from one altitude to another altitude. And this, quite, this appears quite a lot on map skills questions, where they ask you to describe the relief of a section of land. On ordnance survey maps, you can see height represented in two different ways. Contour lines, which are the diagrams that you can see on the left. These are normally brown lines that are drawn on a map where they circle a certain area and each line indicates a certain height that it have, has above sea level. And on the right hand side of the map, you can see the second way, it's the spot height. This indicates the exact height um, that the ground has above sea level on that exact point. And it's normally represented by a dot with a number next to it or sometimes it's represented by a triangle with a dot uh, in it as well. Sometimes, to make ordnance survey maps easier to read, we use an index interval. This is used on the contour lines, and every so often the contour lines are thicker and bolder than the rest, and they have numbers next to it, whereas the other contour lines do not. We can tell what the other contour lines are because it will tell you on the key what the contour interval is. One of the benefits of contour intervals is that they tell you how steep a slope actually is. Now if you can see on this diagram uh, the area that I've circled in red, where all the contour lines are very closely packed together, this indicates a very steep slope. Whereas if the contour interval is quite widely spread, this indicates that the land is going to be relatively flat. The actual shape of the contours can also be useful. For example, in this uh, image that we can see over here, when contour lines cross a stream or a river, they bend towards the higher elevations. So the V point that is generated, that is highlighted in the green uh, marker over here, points upstream. Therefore, we can see that the northeastern part of this map is where the river is going to be emptying into the ocean, and the southwest part of the map, um, where the V's are pointing towards, is going to be uh, upstream. Here are some other useful contour interpretations. We can see hills and mountains are normally concentric circles. We can see that if there's a ridge, there is a V shaped in the third diagram. And uh, we can see if there's a valley, um, how that also is indicated in a V shape as well. And we can also see depressions in the Earth's surface, like a crater, which is shown on the map by a series of enclosed contours, where the height becomes lower. Uh, to avoid confusing the last one with hills, the depression contours have short bars on them that point towards the center of the uh, depression. Now we come towards the skill of how do we calculate gradients with the various measurements that we have. In previous videos, I've talked about distance. That's also going to be important to calculate a gradient. And in those videos, I talked about the fact that distance has to be calculated normally in meters. That's because elevation or altitude is calculated in meters as well. So when we need to work out the gradient, we have to use the same unit. You have to be very careful of that. All of the units have to be in the same type, in this case, meters. So a gradient is the rate of change that the slope has. And the formula to work it out is the vertical interval, or the difference in height, over the horizontal equivalent, or the horizontal distance. Although the calculation of gradient is exactly the same in math as it is in geography, we represent the numbers slightly differently. Mathematicians will represent a gradient as a fraction, 
whereas in geography we represent it as a ratio. So remember, please, always represent the gradient as a ratio, not as a fraction, because you are studying geography and not math. Just to indicate how important it is to convert all of the units into the same scale, I've put in slide just to show it. And remember, meters. It is very important that all of your measurements are calculated in meters. In this slide, I'm going to show you how we calculate a normal gradient. We can see over here, uh, we want to work out the gradient of the slope. We know that the change in altitude or the uh, elevation is one meter. And we know that the distance traveled to reach that one meter is 20 meters. Therefore, the ratio would be one to 20. And that means that for every 20 meters that we walk, there will be an elevation in height of one meter. This, in other words, is going to be a very gradual or a very small slope. Here is an example where we use contour lines that can be seen on the map. And uh, we can see that the change in elevation is, or the highest elevation is 373 meters. And um, if we travel from Lilydale to the height or the top of the hill, um, the height of Lilydale is 315 meters. So 373 meters minus 315 meters is 58 meters. Then if we travel uh, from Lilydale to the top of the hill, we have traveled 700 meters. Therefore, 58 meters over 700 meters equals a ratio of 1 to 12. That means that for every 1 meter that we have climbed in height, we need to walk 12 meters to gain that altitude. Every 12 meters, there's an elevation of 1 meter, in other words. And on this slide, we can see what the gradient number actually means. The previous one we had was 1 in 12, which we can see from this classification means that the hill slope is going to be moderate to gradual. It is going to be quite easy to climb or to walk up. But if you're in a car, you're going to have to engage your low gear. And as we go up uh, to the left hand side of this classification gradient, we can see that it becomes very, very steep if it's a one to one or a one to two gradient. Another useful gradient skill that we can use is creating a cross section. This is quite common to appear on exam papers. And if you can see, if we want to find our way from point A to point B, we're going to have to traverse certain different gradient points. Now, one of the ways that you can do this is using a piece of paper, and you can see that we've marked on the different changes in gradient or changes in elevation that we have, and we've indicated what these measurements are. Now, taking the piece of paper that we made from the cross section or drawing the cross section from the map and the elevation, we can now draw lines up from the base to make the dot at the correct height, and then we smooth the line joining the dots. I've seen this question quite a lot on GCC examinations, and typically what they ask you is they ask you to label on a cross section that they've already created the parts that they would like you to find. A lot of students find this quite hard, but if you understand how they've worked it out and how they've calculated it, you should be able to reverse this process and to mark the points correctly on your cross section. That concludes the gradient and also the height skills that you might need to do on an ordnance survey map. I hope you've enjoyed this video and you found it useful for your revision. If you've liked it, please click the like button. And if you'd like to see more content, subscribe to our channel for future videos. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a really great day.